Mexican Drug War Controversies Vicente Zambada Niebla, a member of the Sinaloa cartel and son of Ishmael Zambada Garcia, one of the top drug lords in Mexico, claimed after his arrest to his attorneys that he and other top Sinaloa cartel members had received immunity by U.S. agents and a virtual license to smuggle cocaine over the United States border, in exchange for intelligence about rival cartels engaged in the Mexican drug war. In October 2013, Two former federal agents and an ex-CIA contractor told an American television network that CIA operatives were involved in the kidnapping and murder of DEA covert agent Enrique Camarena, because he was a threat to the agency's drug operations in Mexico. According to the three men, the CIA was collaborating with drug traffickers moving cocaine and marijuana to the United States, and using its share of the profits to finance Nicaraguan Contra rebels attempting to overthrow Nicaragua's Sandinista government. A CIA spokesman responded, calling it ridiculous to suggest that the agency had anything to do with the murder of a U.S. federal agent or the escape of his alleged killer. According to former presidents Fernando Henrique Cardozo of Brazil, Ernesto Zedillo of Mexico and Cesar Gaviria of Colombia, the United States-led drug war is pushing Latin America into a downward spiral, Mr. Cardozo said in a conference that the available evidence indicates that the war on drugs is a failed war. The panel of the Latin American Commission on Drugs and Democracy Commission, headed by Cardozo, stated that the countries involved in this war should remove the taboos and re-examine the anti-drug programs. Latin American governments have followed the advice of the U.S. to combat the drug war, but the policies had little effect. The commission made some recommendations to United States President Barack Obama to consider new policies, such as decriminalization of marijuana and to treat drug use as a public health problem and not as a security problem. The Council on Hemispheric Affairs states it is time to seriously consider drug decriminalization and legalization, a policy initiative that would be in direct opposition to the interests of criminal gangs. Money laundering Despite the fact that Mexican drug cartels and their Colombian suppliers generate, launder and remove $18 billion to $39 billion from the United States each year, the U.S. and Mexican governments have been criticized for their unwillingness or slow response to confront the various cartels' financial operations, including money laundering. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, has identified the need to increase financial investigations relating to the movement of illegal drug funds to Mexico. The DEA states that attacking the financial infrastructure of drug cartels has to play a key role in any viable drug enforcement strategy. The U.S. DEA has noted that the U.S. and Mexican financial services industry continues to be a facilitator for drug money movement. Following suit, in August 2010 President Felipe Calderón proposed sweeping new measures to crack down on the cash smuggling and money laundering. Calderón proposes a ban on cash purchases of real estate and of certain luxury goods that cost more than 100,000 pesos, about 8,104 U.S. dollars. His package would also require more businesses to report large transactions, such as real estate, jewelry and purchases of armor plating. In June 2010, Calderon announced strict limits on the amount in U.S. dollars that can be deposited or exchanged in banks, but the proposed restrictions to financial institutions are facing tough opposition in the Mexican legislature. In 2011, Wachovia, at one time a major U.S. bank, was implicated in laundering money for Mexican drug lords. In a settlement, Wachovia paid federal authorities $110 million in forfeiture. A U.S. Senate report from the Permanent Subcommittee for Investigations revealed in July 2012 that HSBC, one of Europe's biggest banks moved $7 billion in bulk cash from Mexico to the U.S., most of it suspected to assist Mexican drug lords and U.S. drug cartels in moving money to the U.S. While money laundering problems at HSBC have been flagged by regulators for nearly a decade, the bank continued to avoid compliance. On December 12, 2012, HSBC settled for a $1.93 billion fine. Drug Demand <laughs>